All right, so let's talk about sauteing. First, I'm gonna move this. I'm also gonna move this. So um, most of the time I saute vegetables. It's my preferred method. And um, I love to incorporate quinoa into my um, cooking. It's really healthy, it's really easy. A lot of grains need to be soaked or cooked for an extended period of time. Um, quinoa, you just put one cup of quinoa, two cups of water, a little salt and pepper, this is in the recipe, and it's also on the package when you buy the quinoa. And um, cook it for about 10 minutes, on, bring it to a boil, then simmer for about 10 minutes. Turn the pan off with the lid on, come back a few minutes later and it's ready. It's very forgiving too. When I was making this last night, I actually forgot about it and I was like, oh, my quinoa. And it, it's, it's great, it's fine. And it's just, it's um, like a, a super food. So, I like to include that. A lot of times I will make a big batch of quinoa, have that in my fridge all week. It definitely lasts easily through the work week. Um, so what we're going to do to spice that up is saute some veggies. So my pan, I, I don't know, I did that last night. I got kind of beat up. I'm going to use some coconut oil. Um, you could also use you can use whatever oil you want, but we're bringing this to a uh, high heat, so um, it's best to use an oil that isn't going to smoke. Um, you, I, I do use olive oil a lot, but I have to really watch it. Coconut oil um, is a solid at uh, like room temperature. If it gets hot, it starts to melt. So there's a little bit that's melted here. Um, but I just love the flavor of coconut, and this is at least according to the current you know, health commentary this is the best oil that you can eat especially when you're bringing something to high heat so um, I if I didn't have a crowd I would lick my spoon but I won't but <laughs> I always do at home or like I rub it in my hands okay so same with blanching we're gonna put the vegetables in um, essentially in the order uh, of flavor so um, we're going to saute some summer squash, zucchini, and corn. And I am going to grab, here's summer squash and a zucchini. And let me see. Now, can you see this in the mirror? Okay, so I won't rotate everything. Um, always cut the ends off. You want to never work with something bigger than your knife. So this is bigger than my knife. So I'm just going to cut it in half. cut it in pieces and then get a flat surface a piece smaller than my knife and then just rock back and forth and cut it into half moons you can also cut it into just circles if um, if it's smaller and now my oil's hot I can hear it simmering if you crowd I mean this is like the key to cooking if you crowd the pan it will steam whether you're sauteing whether you're cooking meat vegetables if you're roasting like don't crowd your pan and it'll taste better it'll caramelize and it'll roast um, steamed zucchini is fine but ro like not steamed is better okay so I'm gonna cut a bit more so we have that on deck and then my summer squash does anyone have these getting prolific in the garden <laughs> Couple, couple people nodding. I just have a small garden and um, I, I just have a small yard. So we planted our whole front yard with tomatoes and one of the seedlings we got, I don't even think we realized it, but they're purple, like a really deep eggplant purple. So um, I can't wait for them to get ripe. I'm like every day squeezing them, which probably isn't helping. Okay, now with this, um, I did forget something that's really important, which is salt, kosher salt. So I always, this is like my best friend, I always have salt like this and I always salt with my hand. Um, I think it's really the only way. If you want to improve your cooking, improve your salting, and if you want to improve your salting, have it like 
make it more sensory, make it more connected to you. Use your hand. Um, so I don't need to really cook the dickens out of it. I think that that looks good. Also, I don't want to waste everybody's time. So I'm just going to cook them, you know, a little bit and... Okay. So then this quinoa salad, we want to make it really bright and flavorful. So some lemon zest is always nice. Um, I use this microplane for that and you just want to zest really lightly. I just went to the dentist and she told me I should only brush my teeth with three fingers instead of the whole hand. I guess I'm a little like aggressive. So it's kind of like that with zesting, like use three fingers, you know, go really light. Now you know a lot about my oral hygiene. All right, so there's some lemon zest. Also, it's got a lot of flavor, so you don't want to go too crazy. And my pan is really hot. My oil's smoking, which isn't very good, but um, it's okay. If it was olive oil, it would be worse because that oil is not good when it smokes. But I'll put a little more in. Cool it down. Yeah. We're also going to put some tomatoes in there. These are um, from Fat Blossom and they're so pretty. I just couldn't resist. So um, I love to think about flavors and make my best effort to mix spicy and sweet. And the tomatoes are gonna add a lot of sweetness. We already have some salty and fresh from the squash and like a nutty, rich flavor from the quinoa, which is also why I like quinoa, really healthy, but um, also has like a depth to it. So the tomatoes, I'll just quarter and put in there. I also look for color in my meals, lots of color. And I like a mix of cooked and raw. So like, I would never cook the tomatoes for this. I want them to be really bright. Okay, now I will saute some corn. I love sauteed corn. I love it. I love corn off the cob. Even if it's not Jersey corn. I am from Pennsylvania. Okay. So this, I actually don't remember the name of the farm, but we got this just right over there. and. It looks really nice. You can crowd your pan with corn. I don't know why that is, but it still works out fine. So I do it. Okay, don't let me forget to salt. I'll slice a few more tomatoes. This is nice to make if you're having a picnic and you don't know everyone's dietary preferences because it's vegan and gluten-free. So today I'll be hanging out with some gluten-free people. So now they'll all be happy and dairy-free. Um, my, uh, my friend that I'm seeing today doesn't eat cheese. So I'll serve something like this, similar to this with feta on the side. I love feta because it's so salty. So I tend, you know, most of the time when I'm you, having cheese in a salad, it's goat cheese or feta. They're my favorites. Okay, so the corn is starting to cook. I can really smell it. Can you smell it over there a little bit? Cool. I have some extra zucchini to cook up then. Now, in terms of a vinaigrette, the recipe does have a vinaigrette um, in there, which is mostly just lemon juice and um, I think some honey. Um, actually, it doesn't call for honey, but I would probably put it in. And the scallions are lovely too. But the recipe is just a guide. You can make something like this with whatever you have and whatever you like. What we don't want to forget are the herbs. So, yes. Yeah, 
Yeah, that, that's, a good, that's a good observation. It isn't really ideal. If I was at home, I would put them in a separate bowl to cool. And tossing does help to get the heat out of there. So yeah, it does. It does. Um, at home, if you do let those cool separately so that you put everything together at room temperature, that is better, for sure. So for the basil, um, stack your leaves. Nice big leaves work, but my plants are giving me these little guys. So stack them and then roll them. And then slice. The goal is to not make contact with a lot of the leaves. You really just want to, by doing that, we're only hitting like the one outer piece of basil. And then we get a nice chiffonade. If you um, just took a few pieces, this is easier for those that can see the mirror, but if you just chopped it this way, which is tempting, you're making contact with all those leaves and bruising it. So roll it up, chiffonade, it'll be nicer, but this is still fine. So. And then we have some parsley and some mint. These herbs we do just kind of have at them. I love, you know, I, I always have so much mint, I don't really know what to do with it. So putting it in salads is something I do. Salads, iced tea, it's pretty much it. <laughs> mint julep. Yes. So some herbs. Chopped up as much as you like. And then toss a vinaigrette, put feta on it or on the side. And it'll taste like summer. It's pretty much my spiel. Does anyone have any questions? No? All right. Well, I hope you all have a great day. Yeah, my pleasure. Have some fun cooking and eating.